people just join. Yeah. Awesome. So I'm recording. I'll just uh, kick things off a little bit to say, uh, you know, welcome everyone um, to our SB Wasp meetup today. And uh, for those that are new, um, again, thanks for joining. Make sure that you can hit myself or Linux Girl or Char up uh, with an email address if you want to join our Slack. We do have a pretty active Slack channel with tons of channels and um, lots of information on there. So if you, you know, if you want to sort of continue this uh, offline, if you will, that's kind of a great place where we, we tend to hang out and uh, chat in between uh, meetups. We have a few other things scheduled uh, coming up uh, over the next few weeks for talks. So stay tuned to those. Obviously, hopefully, if you found us through the meetup, definitely join there if you, if you haven't already. Um, we do have a Slack. We do have a Discord. Discord is, um, you know, kind of uh, there for more hacking purposes, live hacking, just the nature of, of that platform and, and sort of how that works. Uh, so you'll, you hopefully with, you know, uh, every once in a while, you'll, you'll see someone, myself or, or someone else from the group uh, doing some live hacking and, uh, sh and screen sharing and stuff. So it's a great place to learn uh, and kind of watch maybe some things in, uh, in real time, uh, how some some of these attacks and different things are actually done. Um, let's see what else. Uh, if you're a new member, uh, feel free to uh, give us some ideas for talks. We're always looking for ideas for talks, and we're also looking always looking for speakers. So if you're ever interested uh, in doing talks, uh, so as our our talk today, um, and uh, you know it, he, uh, Dennis is a part of the group, and he felt that he you know had some some things that he'd love to share and maybe other people would be interested. So um, you know, he chose to, to do a talk for us today. So I want to thank him for that, but that pretty much goes for everyone. Uh, don't, don't think that just because you're not a co-organizer or something that you can't do a talk. So please, if you're ever interested, uh, let one of us know and we'll get you scheduled. You don't need to be an expert in the matter, just have a passion for it. Or if you're just curious how it works and you, and you figure like, oh, if I learn it, maybe I'll be able to, to show a few others, you know, a few things uh, on it and just either bring awareness to it or uh, kind of break out of your shell on public speaking uh, or I'd say virtual speaking, whatever, whatever we call this nowadays. But um, so all that good stuff, Slack, Discord, hit us up. We'll get you in. Um, with that said, I'll turn things over to uh, Linux Girl for to introduce our uh, guest speaker for today. Thanks a lot, Dante. Hey, I just wanted to add on to that um, for public speaking. I encourage everybody to participate. And sometimes the best way to learn something is to be able to, to actually do a presentation on that because you realize, wow, I need to explain this. If you can actually explain to the audience, you're actually learning the material, right? That's how I found myself. Sometimes I just force myself to do a presentation. I actually don't like to do it because it's a lot of time, very time consuming, but I think it's a great way for you to grow, to learn the material. All right, so I'm not gonna talk about public speaking anymore, but if you're interested in presenting a topic for SB Was, please let any of the Dante Char and myself, um, so we can put you on the schedule. So um, I'm excited Dennis is gonna be here um, talking about um, the Amazon Honey Co. Um, it's actually, the title of this talk is Power to Build Apps with No Programming Required, right? I mean, a lot of people will be excited if there's no programming required. So before he starts, I want you to do a brief um, intro. Uh, I'm reading his bio now. I, I mean, I actually saw Dennis at the, at the Bobo Loca is where obviously prior COVID. And... Um, so I, I met him there and he has always been somewhat active, right, Dennis? So um, Dennis's professional experience includes 30 years of software engineering management and specializing in real-time systems development. His education background includes a master's in science in high energy physics from UCLA. He's currently pursuing a career relaunch with cloud cloud computing. So without any further ado, I'd like to have you um, join with me to welcome um, Dennis to the floor. So Dennis, uh, I'm turning the control over to you right now. Well, thank you, Linux girl. Um, yeah, so my talk is about Amazon Honeycode and specifically how you can use it to build uh, or to use spreadsheet-based uh, solutions to turn them into mobile apps. I think that's the most uh, powerful uh, aspect of Honeycode. There's plenty of other 
uh, capabilities. But to me, that's the real um, game changer there. Uh, let's see if I can. Uh, so yeah, so here's my agenda to thank uh, Dante and uh, Lenskirol for letting me uh, uh, provide this uh, uh, information. I I uh, took uh, took pity on them. That makes it sound too dramatic, but. But they were when they were asking for uh, presenters. I know what it's like to to have to do that because um, you know I've been the oh, president of local Macintosh users group uh, for Hughes Aircraft and Raytheon, and we used to have to get speakers. And I know how hard that can be. So um, I'm more than happy to help them out, and I appreciate them uh, letting me do it. Uh, my agenda is charts. Hopefully, before you get bored. Then we'll do a live demo, then some more charts, and another live demo. And I have the word slow down there because um, my professional experience in presenting would be to like, you know, uh, high level managers, VPs, executives, and they're always like, you know, step it up, no details, just the bottom line, let's move it, that kind of thing. So I tend to uh, sometimes go too fast. So, um, you know, feel free to to ask to slow down if you need to. And, and I'll pause for questions. Um, I'm not gonna go over my bio in detail. I think uh, Linux Girl did a great job. Uh, I just wanna mention that, uh, you know, I went to UCLA, so I'm a Bruin. Uh, I got to work at CERN for three months. That was fun, actually. Uh, particle physics facility in Geneva, Switzerland. And I learned how to throw darts and eat cheese for dessert. Those, those are the two big things I learned there. Uh, among Hi, other things. Uh, I'm now teaching and tutoring in physics, spreadsheets, project management, and Python, and going to school at uh, El Camino to learn how to be a cloud engineer, hopefully. And there's my LinkedIn page, you know, pretty exciting stuff. So. Uh, let's see. The charts are a little unresponsive. There we go. There we go. So, um, so as I mentioned, I, I'm going to El Camino and uh, doing some cloud engineering, uh, the curriculum that they have there. And uh, as part of that, I was um, uh, AWS Educate actually came out and said, hey, you want to be a like a cattle call kind of to everybody in cloud community. Anybody who wants to be a student ambassador, you just apply, send us a video and, and uh, so I applied to be a uh, AWS Educate student ambassador, and I, I got in. So that was kind of cool. Uh, they we have meetings uh, once every month or so, and various um, and it's worldwide. It's uh, interact with people um, in other countries, other time zones, all over the place, and uh, so it's all pretty exciting. And among the many events or uh, things that they, you know, we do as a group. Uh, so well, let's, uh, the leaders of the uh, team said, well, let's have a hackathon and let's have a hackathon about Honeycode, Amazon Honeycode. And uh, as I mentioned, it's, it's great for making uh, apps, mobile apps from uh, spreadsheet solutions. And I'm a spreadsheet guy, and, you know, like Google Sheets and Excel. So when I heard this, I thought, great, I'll join the, the hackathon and uh, give it a shot. And uh, so why not? So what I did was I, uh, my goal, the, one of the projects I uh, selected was to replace my Google Sheets tool. I have a, a, uh, a spreadsheet in Google Sheets that I use for shopping. And it's not like I'm, you know, terribly interested in shopping, <laughs> but, but with uh, uh, you know COVID nineteen coronavirus, I thought, gee, you know, it'd be really good if I could figure out a way to get in and out of a store really fast. You know, you just go down for Q tips at CVS, so you can get in uh, pretty quickly. But if you go to something like Costco and you're buying all that stuff, um, you want to get in and out fast. You want to be prepared before you go, and so on and so forth. So I built. Um, a tool in Google Sheets, and it looked worked great on the dining room table. And um, you know, I'll, as you can imagine, it's just a spreadsheet with all the things you're going to buy, where it's located, that kind of thing. 
And uh, but then when you try to use it on a phone, it's terrible because uh, trying to use a spreadsheet on a phone, I, I mean, even if you have one of those bigger phones, I have a, like a medium sized one, it's ridiculous. I mean, here's a screenshot here, and I'll show you a live demo. On the web. But you can see there's all these items, it's real tiny, you click on it to try to change it, and um, or maybe to tell yourself that you bought it, and it just doesn't work as well. Go the when Google uh, devised a way to allow you to use your sp spreadsheet on the phone is still pretty much the same, you know, format as it is on a browser. So doesn't, there's not enough screen real estate to work very well. So what did I do? Ah, and yeah, so I joined the hackathon, maybe win a t-shirt. And, uh, so uh, so I first, first of all, I set out the requirements. What was it to, to reduce or improve the functionality that I've already had uh, to make it much more visible? And in order to um, determine whether or not I had a successful app, I wanted to have a help screen, you know, welcome screen, uh, add a record, modify a record, delete a record with confirmation. It's always important if you're going to delete to have confirmation. I'll filter and sorting. Uh, and all this stuff. And the premise of the hackathon was, or the claim at the time, I thought it was just a claim. Now I know it's true that you could probably knock this out in a couple of days, even if you're completely um, ignorant about uh, the Honeycode environment. You just watch a few videos and they've got wizards and you can just knock it out in a few days. Now, so I was somewhat skeptical, but. Um, I did, and I, I was able to knock this out, I think probably three or four days, um, you know, not 24 hours, but part-time, you know, three, like four hours a day, maybe uh, maybe 20 hours tops. And that was the first time I, I did it. And I was even, you know, I tried to be macho about it and I would so I said, oh, use this wizard. And I'd say, oh, wizards are for, you know, somebody doesn't know what they're doing. I'm just gonna try to, I'll do it by, the long way. And uh, I found out later that their wizards are actually quite good. And you can, uh, with a few clicks, create the app that way. And I'll show you later in the talk. And it's like, yeah, I shouldn't have been so, you know, macho about it. Um, so after just a few days, I was able to get uh, these screens. And, uh, and you can see the, the information is much more visible here uh, these are a couple snapshots and I'll, I'll show you on my phone in a minute oh here we are do the first live demo before they fall asleep so okay great i will do that so i figured out uh last night how to hook up my phone and uh have it visible so that's my phone on the no oh, there's my sons they look they're a lot older now they're a lot more scary than they were there. Uh, let's see. So first I'm gonna show the, the bad one. The one that's, uh, so there it is. It's the, this is the spreadsheet version. And you can see it's kind of hidden. So if you turn your phone sideways, uh, well, it still doesn't quite fit. You know, if you click on this, these are salted somethings. I don't know, there we go. They're, uh, salted butter. So, and you know, if you wanted to change uh, whether or not it's been purchased, if you click on that, you got to click in here, and then you lose the whole screen if you want to change the entry in that cell, right? And you can imagine what it's like to use this at the store. Um, it just is just too much. It's not um, optimized for, for use at all. So um, I would have my wife when I tried to get her to use it. She thought you're an idiot. So, but uh, the Honeycode version actually works quite well. So here's the Honeycode version. Uh, so, you know, the first screen, it's like a little welcome screen. You ask, where are you? And uh, you can say, well, I'm at, uh, I'm at Costco, right? And then it asks you, uh, well, do you want to buy 
low priority items uh, or or just uh, or medium and above or what and so you can set the priority like you know for everything which is either no selection or low and uh, oops. and then um and then you can say well i want to see only what i need because maybe at home you would modify the information to say well this you know we have this we don't have that and uh, or you can say all items you know and uh so then you hit shop and so this is the main screen for uh as you're shopping it, there's basically one item per screen so instead of um a spreadsheet where you've got all the items in the world squeezed onto the your phone screen you've actually got one item it's like oh beer I need that. Oh, I just put it in my cart so I can change to purchased and uh, that kind of thing. And now I don't need these items, but oh, I'm tired of looking at purchased. I'm not going to look at all items. I'm going to look at just what I need. So, oops, we're out of frozen lasagna. Um, so I put it in the cart. If I say purchased, uh, the frozen lasagna disappeared because now it's it's bought. See and. And when you get, it's very it's somewhat rewarding. You get to the end of the store and the, your display is empty, which means you were able to find everything. Oh, and, it all, oh, and I guess this is the most important aspect of it. Uh, it tells you what aisle the uh, items are in and it's all sorted. You know, you go in the front door, it's all sorted by the uh, closest things first. So you can just go right through serially uh, by aisle and get everything in order. All right. So that's the comparison of the two applications. So you can see um, the difference. Um, so I just want to check and make sure everybody's still there. Uh, Dante, everyone there? Yep. Uh, no okay. questions yet, but uh, yeah, it looks like everyone's still alive. Yep. Okay. Well, hopefully. <laughs> you had me uh, at beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody keeps wanting. I got to go out for a beer. Right? Um, so the biggest challenges I faced, uh, which um, the first one was me being stupid, which I mentioned before, that uh, when I ported the sheets, uh, you create pick lists, which uh, I'll show you later. But basically, a pick list is instead of entering data in a spreadsheet cell like 12 or Jimmy or whatever, you it's there's a drop down menu and only a finite number of uh, pieces of information. And I had some trouble with that. And then I got uh, the Honeycode community is like fantastic. I don't, if it's in alpha or beta now, it's amazing how many um, participants there are there and, and how quickly they get back to you. And there's this one woman I probably should have remembered, put her name down, but I forget. She was extremely helpful. And she said, you know, just use the wizard. It works really well. And I said, well, yeah, I kind of, no, no, just use the wizard. And so I said, okay. So after I struggled with it uh, for a few hours, and I got a solution. I thought that was cool. Then I tried doing it again with the wizard, and that was done in like three minutes. I was like, oh, great. So, uh, so like I said, the wizards are great. And uh, uh, so I had one thing I did uh, do uh, kind of hard, and it, it was pretty challenging. And I had to write a filter for sorting it. Um, so it would present it in, all the data in the right order when you're using the app. And actually, it'd have to come up with it. I don't know if, if people are familiar with like uh, C Sharp and you put a SQL query in your C Sharp code and you had to write these all these, you know, there's like all these double, triple, quadruple quotes and that kind of thing. And I don't know if you've ever dealt with that. So the same thing is here. And I did have to, so this is like one example of a filter I wrote. And I'm pretty sure. This is not overly complex. Like there was not a, a simpler way to do it, I don't think. Although uh, there's an automations aspect of Honeycode that I might have been able to use that would have made it simpler. But so that part was challenging. Um, but it, I did get it to work and and um, aggregating calculations like an array formula and that kind of thing. Or that's not quite there yet. Um, so the greatest resources that I was using at the time, other participants in the hackathon, uh, my mentors for AWS Educate, 
And like I said, the Honeycode community website is fantastic. It just tells you, I did. Oh, I, I didn't mention this, um, but all, videos. There's like a bunch of videos that Amazon provides and amateurs like me provide and that kind of thing. Uh, and here's some improvements I wanted to add at some point, um, just have a, have it so it could, I put prices in, so it would give you a running total. Like, Hey, when you come to that, uh, checkouts at, uh, wherever you are, maybe Costco and you get like hit with a $500 bill, it's not a complete sticker shock, you know, it's coming. And, uh, let's see. So, uh, I want to show you what the Honeycode environment is actually like. And, uh, show the makeup of tables and app screens and do a light build and that kind of thing. So I'll do that real quick now. Um, so I'm going to get out of here. I'll try to get out of here. There we go. And let's go to the Honeycode environment. Probably, well, I guess right here. Right, that's where we do it. Let's see. So the way that Amazon is promoting Honeycode now, it's basically like um, a workflow app or, uh, you know, team management kind of thing. But for me, since I'm a spreadsheet guy for the last, I, I think the first spreadsheet I got was in like on my Commodore 64 and God knows when that was 80 or something 83 and uh and i got the first you know first version of excel and, and all that so so i've been using so saying that honeycode is an environment to turn your spreadsheet into something useful on your phone is kind of the way i look at it uh okay so here so the, oops i guess i better go back a little bit so this is the first screen you'll come to and uh, basically, it's it's. I guess you can think of it as like Google Drive, right? It's a drive of, of projects, right? And each uh, on the left column here, you'll see uh, this is each one of these is a project like uh, shopping list or hackers tools. Uh, here's a quiz I built, you know, like for uh, studying some information. Like maybe you want to study for uh, certification, right? Put a, build a little quiz and every time you're uh find yourself away from home you pick up your phone and you can you know start doing quizzes about certification that kind of thing um and then each under each workshop or um, i'm sorry under each project there's a uh there's apps these are actually apps and it can run in a browser or on your phone and uh so that these are the items under here uh, there's also some other uh, places to go. Here's, you know, the Honeycode uh, community where you can get answers to things. Uh, there's some templates, uh, you know, product announcements, see what's going on with the Honeycode. So let's take a look at uh, first this shopping. So this is a copy of, oh, by the way, I should make a note here. If you do start playing with this, make sure that... Um, the versioning isn't there yet. I mean, it does have some uh, ways you can back up and uh, control Z kind of works and everything, but only so deep. And if you ever get serious about fooling around with this stuff, it's really good to, um, you know, take a work, a project and essentially duplicate it. So uh, a lot of people have multiple copies. So this is one of the copies of that shopping application I have. So you click on that and you get this uh, screen. And so this is the, the inside of the, the worksheet. This is the main development environment or workbook, I guess. And so these icons over here, these are the tables that you build. Uh, so these are equivalent to the sp uh, spreadsheet that you think of in terms, if you're familiar with building spreadsheets of certain complexity and having that. So each one of these tables is a different, uh, you can think of it as a different spreadsheet. Right? And it's typical to like a relational database or something where you have tables. And then uh, 
this is the builder. We're actually building. Uh, oh, well, before I show you that, I want to mention one thing. So I mentioned pick lists. So here, the main spreadsheet, the main table that has all the uh, items you want to shop for is right here. You know, the item you want to buy and where you want to buy it, whether or not it's purchased, importance, and so on. And then each one of these are a pick list, which is a finite list of information, right? And uh, like I said, uh, building these are pretty easy, especially if you use the wizard. And they refer to uh, other tables. So for instance, here's a table of, uh, you know, these are the, the main shopping table. For the stores, the where column, that's all delineated in this table called store. I should call it stores, obviously. But, but so these are all the different stores that I, you know, you could go shopping in. And these these silly ones down here were just me putting in extras to to ex experiment. I never deleted them. But, um, that kind of, so each each pick list is a separate uh, table, like priorities and so on and so forth. The next icon here is the uh, the builder. So the builder is where you actually build the app. So once you've built all the tables and you've related them and that's all your data, then you can start building your apps. Uh, and you can have more than one app for a set of tables, that's fine. And um, the way you do it is you, buy, you build interaction screens. And then in each screen, there's uh, multiple fields and, and buttons where you can, um, you know, take certain actions. So the, there's the welcome screen and it's uh, built like that. There's a, uh, there's, uh, you can choose what store you're at and what type of items you want to see. And then you hit shop. And when you click on the shop button, um, then here's the priorities or the, sorry, the properties on the right in terms of what it, it will see and the actions that it'll do. And typically the sort of the fundamental actions are when you click a button is maybe updates some information on the current screen or grab some of it to pass to the next screen. And that's the information that you're setting up here. So you're not really programming as much as you're uh, linking bits of information from your spreadsheets on various screens and then updating them as you go and that kind of thing. And um, like I said, there's wizards and some of this stuff is automatically built for you in the background, most of it is. And there's very little, I think, I mean, the only example I can think of that I had to get a little tricky was uh, where I built that filter to sort everything the right way. And the other way I got tricky, I think, was uh, deleting data. Let's see, that's probably not add items. Uh, here maybe uh, it's here yeah so um this is a screen where if you click on uh one of the records of information uh you actually have the option of changing the data there so instead of cheddar cheese maybe you want swiss cheese or something or you can delete it so uh you know i created a button to delete the item but i also had to create a way to do a confirmation screen and so I got a little tricky here about making buttons invisible depending upon conditions and that kind of thing. But still not really a lot of coding, just you know, picking a button and um, you know, changing its visibility here somewhere over here, I guess. Yeah, so you know, initial value true, uh, but then it makes that button invisible when you select some other button, that kind of thing. All right, so that's this is the environment and how you build uh, the screens. And uh, you, oh, I, one thing I mentioned, you could do you know, all your work in tables here and use it like a regular spreadsheet, but that's not the point. The point is to build these apps, right? So you can either, um, so go, going back to the app, you can view your app, right? And so this is, um, now you don't want to carry your laptop with you, but this gives you a way to preview uh, what the app looks like. And actually a good way to interact with 
uh, the data at home. Like, so you're like home and you're looking to update it and say, oh, I, we're out of coffee. We need, you know, data chips, whatever. And uh, so you can use that here. And this is the same welcome screen you would see on the, um, the, the, uh, your phone, your mobile device, right? And, uh, and then this is the, the one shopping screen uh, with the items on there. And you, there, there are other, um, there's also a navigational table here uh, if you wanted to add a store, that kind of thing. So. Uh, like I said, these these uh, various screens are pretty easy to build. And when you are building the the uh, the application, there's an icon here, and you can choose to either uh, link your mobile uh, the way the screen looks on the mobile device with the way the screen looks on the web, right? And uh, if you do that. Uh, you're a lot better off. You can actually decouple them to make the, um, the application look a little bit different on, in the browser versus uh, on your phone. And that's okay, but then you got to remember to make any change you make, you got to make it in two different places. So it's better to keep this turned on and try to uh, make it so it's you know the greatest common denominator of using the app both on your phone and, uh, you know, on the browser. So the so that that's the shopping app and the hunting code environment used to build it. So the one thing I want to do a live demo of is um, since I want to make this relevant to hacking and um, the cybersecurity and all that. That's kind of what the group is about is uh, I took a, uh, a web page, which is here. So this is a hacker one web page. It's got 100 hacking tools and resources. So this is a neat web page. I thought it was neat. I mean, it even mentions uh, Rapid7 in a couple of places. Which is, uh, but so just a, a list of 100 uh, hacker tools and, and uh, resources and uh, a, a hyperlink the information that kind of thing. So I want I wanted to scrape this information and put it in a um, a Honeycode solution that so you could have it on your phone if you wanted. And maybe that's not what you want to do with this information. Maybe the web page is fine. But um, this I thought this would be a good example for some other information you want to uh, scrape and uh, put in an applicate Honeycode application. So the first thing I had to do is basically turn this into a spreadsheet. So what I did, um, and here's the spreadsheet I went, ended up with. So uh, what I did was I, you know, you could just take the, um, the page as it is, copy it and put it in the spreadsheet. Well, that's ugly and not terribly useful. But it gives you a, a place to start to gather the information. And then you can use a little trick that I have, hopefully, and here it is. So if you're a, an, um, a spreadsheet expert, you can use a function called uh, import XML. There's also an import HTML uh, function. And you can use it to scrape a web page. So what I did was I took that web page URL and I scraped all the um, hyperlink references from the uh, XML inside of it. And when I did that, just with one command, right, or one function, um, it spits out all the hyperlinks from that web page. And here they all are, right? This is not data I entered in. This is data that came from that one function, the, the, scrape, the import X, XML function. So if we scroll down a little bit, you'll see, boom, there's all the links that were in that, uh, that web page, right? So that allowed me to then grab them and put them in the spreadsheet. And uh, then I used some um, uh, string formulas to, to grab the information out of here I wanted. Again, doing it spreadsheet type, I didn't use grep or whatever, you know, just um, spreadsheet formulas is fine. And that, it, that enabled me within about 10 minutes or so 
to uh, grab that data, partition it, and put it in a in a uh, two-dimensional you know database here, or well, a spreadsheet. And uh, so it's got you know the name of the tool, the description, uh, the type of the tool it was, and all the hyperlinks. So now I've got this um, Google sheet from that article from Hacker One, and I said, okay, so this is actually somewhat useful. And then in order to turn this into a Honeycode application, you know, I, I downloaded, uh, I won't bother doing now, but you download a CSV, right? So now you've got a CSV, and uh, then it's just a matter of importing the CSV into Honeycode to get the application, and then you'll be on your phone, it'll be fine. So going back to the Honeycode environment, which is here, uh, at this point you can say, create a new workbook, right? And so this shows you the power of wizards and everything. So I'll, no magic, I mean, that to create that spreadsheet was a little tricky because I used import XML, but that's kind of a Google Sheet trick. But now I'll just show you, this is Honeycode and this is how easy it is to use. So I know that CSV is somewhere. So I'm going to use import CSV to a table. And uh, I think this is the right one. I downloaded it before. So I'll say, OK, open it. And uh, so the hackers, tools, and resources. And I have to keep moving my all these photos here. Uh, so I'll say create, right? So still, I've done, I don't know, three clicks so far. And boom, I've got a table, right? And it's basic, so this is equivalent to the, the Google spreadsheet at, the, at this point, right? There's no, there's no application yet. But with three clicks, I've migrated the data from Google Sheets to uh, Honeycode. What next? Well, run builder. And uh, so this is where you're actually building the app. Uh, maybe I should count clicks. That's four, maybe five. So uh, plus sign. So now I'm building an app. Uh, so I learned my lesson. <laughs> I could build it from scratch, but um, it's, it's easier and quicker and more fun. I'll use an app wizard. So I'll use the wizard. What's that? Six, seven clicks? Six clicks? I don't know. So they got the little animation. It's kind of cute. You can watch the video. Uh, but I don't. we don't really need to do that. I don't need to watch the video because it's so easy. So what table I'm using? I only got one table. Uh, there it is, table one. And I don't know. What's that? Eight clicks? That's not even typing. I could change the name of the table here to make it more you know, appealing. But... I'm not gonna for the moment, but I could call it, you know, hacker resources. Uh, so okay, so it's automatically building it. Uh, essentially, it's gonna uh, present the table kind of like this, with uh, these items in there. And I could change them, but I'm not going to because, you know, I can change them later or whatever. So I'll hit just hit the next screen. And uh, so this, if you click, once the app is built and you click on one of the items, this is the screen that will be presented. The uh, Honeycode calls this the table details screen. So basically you click on an item and you could change the information here in the app. And, that, so, and I, the way I could do that is I could change this pencil. If I click it, you know, now you can change the name of the tool in the app, but I'm, you know, this is more of a resource that you're not going to change. So I'm going to make it uh, unchangeable. And you could delete the row, they throw that in automatically for you. And so that's the app details screen. And then they also build for you uh, basically an add an item screen. So if you wanted to add more resources, more hacker resources to this application, you could. So I don't know if anybody's counting. Maybe that's 10 clicks. I don't think I've typed anything yet. And done. So, and uh, so it says, okay, here you are. You can go view your app. We'll view it in a minute. It's 
So I'm just going to say done again. And here's here I am. So here's the um, the project workbook. Uh, oh, and this is actually the app. It made an app. They called it uh, Table One App. Again, we could give it a more interesting name. I'm not going to. And uh, so this is the screen that is presented. Uh, I guess at, uh, at the welcome screen because there's a little home in. This. And uh, so let's view the app on the browser. Again, I still haven't typed a darn thing. So here it is. This is the app. It's uh, it's pretty nice layout. It's got you know the name of the hacker tool, the type the hacker tool is, uh, the description, and the hyperlink. So that's fine. So let's take a look at. Uh, oh, and then there's other. You can add. You know, this button allows you to add hacker tool. It's like adding a record to the spreadsheet and so on. So let's take a look and see what it looks like on the phone. And we might want to have to change one thing. We probably do. Let's see. Honey code. Oops, I got to switch to QuickTime so you can see what I'm doing. So this is a list of all my uh, workbooks, all my projects for Honey code. Here's the guy we just built. Again, I don't think I've typed a darn thing at all. It's all been, I've been just pushing and clicking. Maybe I'm up to like 13 clicks. And uh, so, okay, so here's how it looks on my phone, which is a good start. As you can see, there's one problem, right? The, um, the description field, each one of these, oops, I, can't, I forgot, I have to advance on the phone, not one on the screen. So each one of these is a different hacker tool. And you can see that there is a one problem with the port is that uh, the description column is kind of uh, scrunched, right? It needs more real estate here. So what we want to do is give it uh, more real estate. Everything else is kind of okay. Uh, the name of the tool, uh, the type of the tool and the link, but, uh, and the, oh, and the link works. I just clicked on it and it, it sends me to the appropriate GitHub page. So let's see if I can go back to Honeycode. I can go back to Honeycode. Great. So, so again, I haven't done anything terribly sophisticated, just ran the wizard and it worked out great, except for this one description uh, field. So let's see if we can fix that. So this is where everything breaks down. Ho hopefully not. Uh, so this is our application. This is data cell six is where the description is. See, it's kind of scrunched in. So uh, what I want to do here is move this around and I want to keep it within the same list. So this, this list are, is basically all the records of all the hacker tools and you can change the application. So instead of doing a hundred items that you just scroll through, you could just have it one item at a time. And uh, I don't think the wizard allowed for that, but you could, I could change the code to do that, but I don't, I don't take the time now. But I do want to make this more visible and hopefully I can do this without breaking anything. So if I select that content box, and I think what I need to do is basically, oh, I think I, I did it, I remember now, I think I added an object here and I added a segment. Yeah, so the segment is basically another section of the screen, but it's still within that, um, uh, I'm not sure what to call this part of the screen, but this, this large field, which is a list of all the records. And if I can just move this content box into the other segment, which is a little tricky because my screen doesn't, oh, there we go. Uh, I think that did it. And then I can clean this up a little bit. Uh, the description's not there anymore. So I guess I'll, I'll get rid of this. Hopefully. There we go. And maybe I'll move this over a little bit. And well, maybe make this bigger. Looks like I can, uh, I can widen the 
see which one of these was kind of scrunched. I think the name of the tool was kind of scrunched. So I'll make this a little bigger. And make this a little bigger. Oh yeah, and I think the hyperlink was kind of goofy looking, so. I'll just widen this a little bit. Yeah, something. Let's try that. I can always change it later. Dennis, I have a quick question. Does sure. this is this the mobile device layout? Obviously. Yeah. This I is, mean, this this, this is mm -hmm. really um, the, the mobile device build environment. If I was working on the web, oh, click, yeah, that's right. So you would over play. here, okay, and it looks a little different. But mm, since I have yeah. them linked, Honeygoat again is doing all the work behind uh -huh. the screen. Since I have yeah. linked to try to make them um, blend essentially, so okay. I think this will look better. Keep yeah. your fingers crossed. Uh, we'll find out in about a minute here. So um, let's go to the quick time again. And so this is the way the app looked before. And to go back, so that's it. Hey, so um, it reformatted it. So Burp Suite, which is a type Burp Suite, uh, here's the link to it, and it says you know then quintessential quintess. Quint how do you say that word? Quintessential. 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 Yeah. yeah. Quintessential. Uh, web app hacking tool and you know and then here are the other uh, you know all the other device um, hacker tools so like I said I could change the application so it only show one at a time and then you hit a button and it goes to the next screen but I you know I, just, I don't want to do that in real demo I can search for a tool um, does somebody I should try audience participation does somebody have a favorite hacker tool or resource and uh, see if I can find it. It's in, maybe it's in this list of a hundred. I think I saw Durb before. D I R B. D D I R B. Okay, cool. So um, Durb is a web content scanner and launches a dictionary-based hack attack. It gets web server analyzer. There's Durb Buster. Yep, that's another one there, sort of there related. So that's cool. Yeah, that's neat. And again, it's on your phone. And maybe you're writing the train to work, but although no one does it anymore, right? Yeah. <laughs> you could use your phone to look up these hacks or resources. And um, so, what's the point? The point is, I took a web page which had a, you know, a serial list of information, migrated it to Google Sheets with a little bit of trickery, and got a kind of a nice Google Sheet solution. But that's going to look like you know crap on my phone, so that's I get I ported it to Honeycomb, and again I I don't think I typed a darn thing. I just did like twelve clicks, and I came up with a solution in Honeycomb that kind of looked okay, and uh, then you know four more clicks and it's a lot more uh, readable. So, I think that's um, it. I have a question. So all the logic is going to be built. It's just like a wizard, right, Dennis? You just, uh -huh. you know, kind of look at the mobile and then put a layout. The, all the logic of all this button, the widgets, is through the action tab, right? Because you have to provide some logic, right? If you have, like, the, sh the shopping list that you had, you needed to input the logic there. It doesn't just remove or... Well, it has the standard set of uh, actions that it takes in automation. And so you can pick those. And those are the kind of things you'd expect, you know, add a record, delete a record, change a record, add a column, that kind of thing. They're all there for the, the choosing. They're like widgets, I guess is one way to put it. So, yeah, the, the shopping list, there's more, there's more to it. It's a little, uh, you know, uh, takes a little bit of skill. But uh, I'll, maybe I can show you, um, for instance, the, um, uh, oh, let's say delete unused stores. So I have an action where 
um, maybe I was frequenting a store and they went out of business, which unfortunately is happening all the time. And uh, so, uh, so I created a screen for that. And I think there's a little bit of smarts in here. I'm trying to remember when I built this thing. Because what it does is it only lists stores, it lists only stores that you have no shopping items tied to. So it won't let you delete a store uh, if, what's a good example? So let's say you know, Target's never gonna go out. Bed Bath & Beyond, they're, they're struggling, right? So maybe I, I buy towels there. So if I still have towels linked to Bed Bath & Beyond, it won't let me uh, delete it. It won't let me delete that store until I, you know, relink that item. Yeah, that makes sense because there's the orphan. I mean, there's um, dependence, right? Of the right. So you can't delete that. So what is your action tab? So oh, the action. Okay. Yeah. There's nothing much going on there. Yeah. So this is the uh, delete store. Uh, Okay, so the leads, so this screen lists all the stores that have only uh, that have no items linked to them. Okay, and uh, see, do I have that? I'm trying to remember exactly. Somewhere in here, I have. Oh, it's probably on the. Uh, there it is. I think that's it. So the data. So you have to click on the one tricky part of using Honeycode, you'll put some, you'll hide some intelligence somewhere and you gotta remember where that intelligence is, right? So that's, I guess that's the one challenging thing. If you're familiar with coding uh, and software development and you're looking at the whole program, it's basically a, a, a structured list of, of information and code. And if you forget where you put something, but you kind of remember something about it, you can do a search through the whole string. So right now I was trying to remember where, uh, where I put the smarts in this thing to say, okay, I wanna delete a store, but only if there's no items linked to that store. So I had to click around. I wasn't able to do a search for the logic because uh, it's hidden in a widget somewhere. So I had to remember where, where does that go? And I remember, oh, I have to click the whole list field, not just individual items here. And once you click, remember, oh, I got to click the list field, then here's the smarts for that. There's uh, a filter that mm -hmm. says uh, list all the stores, but only if uh, related shopping items are equal to zero, right? So this is basically a, a query. So now when I, I display that screen in my app, it's only going to present to me stores that I don't have any items uh, linked to, and then I can delete that store. So... Uh, so what was your original question? Oh, when you put smarts in this? How you well, I thought, this is what I thought. I thought, I know you're sure you just show this by clicking on the store list, right? And here's the logic, you know, and I was thinking about you're setting it when you click, when you click on the widget delete store, the action tab would have some smart to it. Yes. So instead of the data. Um, so, um, so that, okay, I understand your question now. So where's yeah. the actual action of deleting it? So when you, in the app, when you, I guess I could show you the app real quick. It's easier to, um, no, not, I don't want to share it. I want to view it. So if I want to delete a store, all right, so this is, again, this is listing only the stores that have zero items linked to them, right? And uh, they're made up stupid, you know, I put junk here. So when you click on an item, it punches you through to a detail screen. So this is unused store details, and that's where you delete it. So to go back to the environment to show you that, which I think is uh, not there, here. So that's this screen, unused store detail. And so here are the actions, the buttons. That, so if I click on the button, and I look in properties, uh, so you know it's visible. That's nice. And the, here's the automation that's done. Right? It takes the uh, the current row and it deletes it. This is the action. So it deletes specified row. So that's what that button does. Okay. The cancel mm -hmm. button. Um, mm -hmm. 
it navigates to a new screen and it goes to the previous screen. Mm. And uh, so if you yeah. cancel, it goes back to where you were a minute ago. So the actions, okay. so I, I guess I've never, um, this is my first, you know, I, it's funny. Um, I think this is my first uh, time I've ever used a, like a GUI builder, I guess you could call it. <laughs> so it's like all the widgets. I mean, I've always coded in, yeah. in code, right? And, yeah. and uh, the, the challenging thing that I found is yeah. to find, you, you did something useful. You put some information in there, but now you got to find it. And uh, <laughs> so it's easy to build it, but then to try to find what you did before, it's like, where did I put that thing? And you got to, you, you find the right item, you click on the right spot. Oh yeah, there's the smarts to it. And that's the, tr maybe who's somebody who's familiar with GUI builders, uh, you know, has some advice on how, how do you find stuff you did? Uh, maybe there's some tricky bit of code somewhere and since it's not a serial file or anything, you can't grep it or you can't search it or whatever. How do you find where the tricky stuff was? Right? And uh, you just got to remember kind of where it is. So di I don't even know how to say di 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 cloud. Somebody said the Apple's relational database, it's kind of like Apple relational database app development platform. So uh, like or I'm not sure how to say his handle. So I, I don't know what that is. Um, the Apple's relation days, relational database app. So, but it might have been yeah, a reference it, to the file to maybe to FileMaker. I've, I've never used that, but it sounded like maybe that's similar to what the, the honey code is doing. And maybe the FileMaker was built off of oh, Apple's and, relational database. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. Oh, that's gotcha. what honey code is under the hood. No, no. Honeycode is Amazon, but this is very similar to how FileMaker works, where you have a database and you enter entries into the database, and then you can get widgets and stuff that you can use with those database items. Uh, well, Apple, didn't Apple use, um, I, not, not FileMaker, but I mean, for the underlying uh, information, like the directory scheme and all that, didn't they use, Apple use an open source uh, database solution that's really popular? I can't remember the name. So FileMaker has always been sort of tangential to them. So I'm not sure like what the whole ecosystem looks like. I, I used FileMaker way back in the past. And now nowadays it, it seems to be, they, they kind of like outsourced it to Claris, it seems like. So yeah, I'm not sure. It just, it was a similar environment, development environment. Like that. Anyway, okay. so that's, it, it's free. Honeycode is free right now. You can have, um, I don't know, up to maybe eight. 10, I don't know how many users, I have to look. And uh, so basically you like your family and a few friends. So you could build an app uh, for, you know, a handful of buddies for free and they can share the app and share all the same data and all work on their phones. And it's real simple. And then I guess, I guess there's the, maybe you can pay some money to have more people. Oh, I, you know, you get, but uh, yeah, I think there's some way to, to have a uh, more powerful version and you can hook it up to using Zapier, if that's the way you say it, for automations. And um, so there's a lot more power to it than I, what I've shown you. But for me, the fun part is very quickly turning a spreadsheet um, solution into something that's usable on a phone. Because like I said, spreadsheets on phones just don't cut it yet. So. so yeah, Adrian, pretty cool. you have, oh, I'm sorry. Adrian, did you have a question? You wrote down document. Uh, just when he said, how do you remember where you put stuff? <laughs> I always mean, just document it. Oh, I see. Oh. There's, a, there, there's some other apps. I think it's something similar. Well, not quite similar, but um, MIT has, I think, a free uh, app builder that's a GUI. It's kind of like um, you drag and drop uh, to, to build your app, and you can make it mobile, is my understanding. I, I don't remember the name a friend of mine was playing around with it too i've i've worked in i've done some rpa work and some of that is kind of in between this um we type builder and coding um and it's a little bit it's a little bit different you can you can automate more um without 
with or without third party and we're marketing to some Aren't there some uh, widget building environments or GUI building environments, whatever you want to call them, where you can s spit out all the code that's created so you could look for something if you wanted to find it, if you forgot where you put it? Well, they do use a, I mean, like UiPath or Blue Prism, those types of items are kind of drag and drop. You can also code natively as well in them. Um, and they do like source control. So typically in, in uh, they're typically used for you know, large organizations that have, that are doing manual stuff, a lot of spreadsheet items or um, it can be anything really. Uh, you can scrape web pages with it, put this exactly what you did, kind of put it in a spreadsheet. You could automate um, adding it into a different app, um, different things like that. But it's it's sort of GUI based, uh, but it also has a little bit more meat to it as far as coding goes. Dennis, I'm curious if you do the view app again and it and it puts it in the browser view. If you view source, I'm really curious as to what. Oh, what yeah, that, actually, I didn't even think of that. That's what that view. even Let's looks like. Yeah. Um, yeah, that probably works. I mean, I, I don't know if it'll show you the actual all the code, but I'm just curious as to like what is it rendering it as. If yeah. It, well, let's try it. Let's see. Uh, view page source. Here we go. Yeah. Oops. Helps if I uh, it's less clumsy. There you go. Okay, so it jumps it, it puts it all into JavaScript. Okay. Yeah, it looks that way. Uh, and it's all hidden away in. Yeah, in, so it basically, it looks like it, it builds a spa. So that's that's kind of cool. Um, yeah. yeah, just curious if you just click on probably just like the the first chunk uh, JS on that last line. Some um, CSS and so what? Which line? Are you uh, on the very bottom left. At least that's how it shows up on my. I mean, any one of those. But yeah, that, that's fine. If you click that, and just curious as to, yep, just a whole lot of JavaScript. All right, so that's yep. what it's doing behind the scenes. Yeah, so I guess uh, it, it client side or server side. I uh, I, I'm, th I would thinking client side since yeah. it appears that that everything is lumped into those two. It's just, you know, similar to like uh, whatever other, you know, uh, yeah. popular JavaScript frameworks. But I guess there's some mediation on the server because two people could be using the same app. Like I could be shopping at one store and another member of my family could be shopping at another and it, we'd be updating the same table. Yeah, um, but I'm, I'm curious is if that's local or like you said, or if that is somehow going to the cloud because how can you... Mm. Hmm, that's interesting. Oh, we are using it. It has to be cloud, wouldn't it? It has to yeah. be cloud. Yeah. Yeah. There's the data. The tables are in the cloud. There's some mediation. Yeah. And it's just the front end to prevent, it. Prevent, uh, you know, overwrites or what, or you know, collisions. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I was curious if it was like if it was going to be a JavaScript or like a PHP or something, but yeah. Yeah. It's like a ton of JavaScript. Yeah. Cool. Well, there's your code. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. It looks messy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's just, that's pretty uh, normal for, yeah. for like a JavaScript app. You know, when, it, when, when you view it like this, when it's. Yeah. Well, yeah. Because I think mine look much, no, just kidding. Uh, yeah. It doesn't. Yeah. But yeah, well, I, mean, I, I think I think the, those use cases are, are pretty awesome. And you mentioned before uh, study guides. I mean, you know, again, I I, I use the spreadsheets quite a bit, but um, I, I would consider myself to be in preschool uh, <laughs> the actual usage <laughs> that I that I get out of mine. But you know, I already had the gears turning before when we had talked earlier about use cases <laughs> for this. And I think that mm -hmm. with a lot of our members, I love the idea. You know, we're we're always asked like, "Hey, I'm studying for this certain for this certain. Who's got what? You know, who's got some stuff you can share, or who's got some test questions?" Or I think. Um, you know, building something for that is awesome. Sure, there's places I can go to, you know, CompTIA, and when I buy a cert, spend 600 bucks and get like a test too. But, you know, obviously it's it's uh, it's financially strapped. You know, most people are are kind of in that in that camp. So if I can just buy the the, the test uh, or the 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 you know the um 
the whatever the voucher uh, for the test, but then go and you know outsource some stuff and get a bunch of things, build an app. Because like you said, I mean, spreadsheets on a phone is is terrible. Um, so to be able to kind of build your own quizzes, I think is intuitive. And I think you're learning not only the whatever you're trying to study while you're building the app, but you're also learning how to kind of build the app. So there's some extra reinforcement. But you know, I think a lot of things, recipes, uh, you know, learning stuff, uh, hacking stuff. I think there's a, a ton of pretty cool uses. Uh, if you could uh, maybe uh, you know, offline, uh, maybe share how you were able to parse or scrape a website to get that into the spreadsheet. I think, I know for myself, for sure, I could benefit from that, but uh, I didn't know uh, the sheets could do that. So um, maybe share that at some point. But. Yeah. Um, yeah. Dennis, that, that, Please share that because I'm I'm not I'm very basic in the spreadsheet and I think it's very powerful if I can just get get that information um, and then yeah I'd be happy I'm happy to provide that um, yeah succinctly um, succinctly it's, it's the import HTML import XML functions uh, oh. in, and you tell it you know import uh, HTML uh, URL and then a table or a list and it just looks within the HTML mm -hmm. and grabs um, an associated table. But yeah, I'd be happy to do that. One thing I did want to mention is I really wish I had the time because I have a lot of really so more sophisticated spreadsheets where I do <laughs> like Monte Carlo simulation. Oh yeah. And and I was wondering if how what much I could tax this thing mm -hmm. to see uh, if you could put fairly complex formulas in the tables that yeah. we generate them by having haven't played it yet. Uh, oh, by the way, the, the record limit at the, this moment in yeah. time for the free version, mm -hmm. I think you're the 2,000 or 2,500 records. I oh, 2,025, okay. All yeah. right, so, so, um, so we have a lot of records that we can use for the free yeah. version. Yeah, 2,000 yeah. record spreadsheet or 2,500, mm -hmm. whatever the number was, is still, it's, Big, hey, what is what is it considered a record to be uh, like an entire sheet or like a call or a row or something? So a record is a row. Okay. okay a record sure. is a row and a field is a column. So if you're a, a database guy, you say records and fields. If you're a spreadsheet guy or gal, you say row <laughs> and column. Ah, interesting. Yeah, we use different terminologies, right? Yeah. So yeah. Um, that's good to know, though, because definitely we probably start out with the free version. Um, yeah, so I I think it's fun to do this. Um, I, I used to have, uh, Dante, I used to do the flashcard or whatever. You, you make your own flashcard. But I use the one that's offered free on the the web, I forgot what's it called, some flash maker, flash card maker, whatever, you know, and it's pretty convenient on mobile devices too, that you can just see your own flash card. But this will have, you, you can customize doing a lot of the stuff. So um, somebody says, citizens said, how much for a record greater than 2,500? Oh yeah, quizzes. Yeah, that's right, Adrian. That's the one I was using. I was making my own flash card. Um, so citizen, do you know? Did it? He's asking. I try. To, I don't know. I, if anything costs money, I just try to <laughs> yeah, avoid it. Right. Yeah. I don't even try. <laughs> Why? So this, uh, are you making some huge thing? <laughs> you know, I actually did try um, to make a huge thing. And well, I give uh, you that one thousand six six hundred eighty. Yeah. Rolls this morning. So. Um, so yeah, I don't know uh, what the honey code, what they're charging. I, I guess they do have one because I was given. Oh, I, I forgot to mention, I came in runner up in the hackathon. The first competition part of it, I came in first and I thought, oh, I got this cinched. And then, uh, but then they had that final competition and they, and I came in second, which is still fun, you know. That's right. What did you, uh, I forget, you were hoping for more licenses, but you got swag or something? Or yeah, I got, I got, well, I was hoping for swag. But I oh, got honestly, the other way around. That's right. <laughs> but I got to, I'll take anything, you know, to, uh, you know, food. I don't, yeah, I know, right here. <laughs> they gave me honey code uh, coins. I think I don't think that's. Oh what yeah, yeah. So, those, uh, those, mm -hmm. so I I have a credit, so I could actually have like you know a whole bunch of people on my team, I guess, and uh, oh. but then I have to be careful. Um, 
you know, because you can use up, they didn't give me an infinite number of coins. And they didn't give me a, like a, a wish that said I could wish for more coins, you know, or something. <laughs> That's always, but um, I don't know, honey code pricing. <laughs> oh, they uh, have. A... Here we go. Oh, hmm. There is a, here's 1, a pricing. Uh, zero, you get for zero dollars, which is my category. Mm -hmm. uh, 2,500 rows in a workbook, unlimited workbooks. That's nice. Integration with Zapier. Is that how you say it? No. Uh, Amazon AppFlow uh, APIs. Oh, that's interesting. I thought you had to pay for the APIs. And you get 20 members for your team. 20 bucks a month, um, which is, I don't know, that's like two cups of coffee and three cups of coffee. Oh that's, yeah, I'm uh, a coffee drinker. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny that when when you see twenty a month, it, you you think that it's like, wow, that's a lot of money. But I then know. You, you I realize, know that um, it's so weird. I I do it all the time, and I still have to like catch myself, like especially like back in the day when I'd pay for web hosting before I tried to get into, you know, doing a lot of my, myself with AWS and stuff, but you know, you can, there's different tiers and it's like, you know, 30 bucks a month. And it's like, wow, that seems like a lot of money, but man, that you, you know, you'd spend that in a week on just random, you know, piddly stuff like, like, you know, coffees or yeah. a fast food breakfast or something. So it, you know, in the scheme of things, it's really not a lot of money, even though it does sound like quite a bit so of you know, money a, a month. It's so true. I'm a coffee drinker and I, I buy, I mean, it's like, wow, if I look at the per month, how much I spend on it, you know, and compared to the price, I just never think that way, right? Because it's like, I love drinking coffee, especially first thing in the morning. It, it's like, how much money would that you accumulate daily? Well, I don't really buy every day, but yeah, so it's not really that much. But citizen, that's for your, your answer. You're looking for a, anything that's greater than did you say 2,500? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, let's, let's say yeah, 2,500. Yeah. Is the free limit. So. Oh, you know, um, this still, even though you pay money, you're still limited to 20 members on your team. So. Um, team meaning who can access. A shared, uh, a shared application. Oh so yeah, can, sure, application. You That's can right. make a copy of your application, and uh, and so if, I guess let me think. So if I wanted to give the application to the twenty first person, and I guess I could kick somebody off my team, bring them on my team, give them right access, so then they can duplicate the application. Uh, at not, I, I keep saying application. I mean the workbook, the whole project. So I guess they can duplicate the whole project onto their drive. We wouldn't be able to share data, but um, but they would have, you know, I built the whole thing. You know, so here it is. Use it for whatever, you know, modify it. Right. Yeah, I was curious if like uh, when you when you were talking about the sharing before, <laughs> and I get the idea of like the pro like the like a team you're sharing the project, everyone's mm -hmm. working on it. But I'm curious as like how you would or if it's possible to complete an application and then share it in the sense of, hey, hey, public, hey, world, here's an app that I built, you know, feel oh. free to use it. I'm wondering if there's mm. like how- Yeah, I don't think there's a way to easily um, share yeah, it Obviously with the it's world. like, it's locked or something. Yeah, I don't know how- yeah, Well, you can to share it with a, one more, per, you know, another person. You can say, hey, here's my, all the work I did, right? And they can click on the little hamburger next to it and duplicate it. So now they got their own version of the whole thing. Right. And so you could do it like, uh, what do they call that old game? Uh, like Telegraph, or, you know. So it's peer to peer, right? You can give it like, I can give it to a handful of people and they in turn can give it to a handful of people. And just right. But I can't make it. Uh, like a just like distributional or something like. Yeah, I can't. I, you can't I, I make, can't make it. so you can't sell it, right? Then it's like your no, no. shopping cart mobile app, right? So. Yeah, I, I can't think. I, I there's no obvious way I can make money other than, you know, I could make a video. And they can watch me doing yeah. it. Or yeah, or some donation links. But yeah. Yeah, but this was fun. I mean, I really enjoyed the hackathon. It was kind of neat because, like I said, I'm an old spreadsheet guy. They, you know, one thing I, I wanted to warn people about when you when you work professionally as a developer, after so many years, that they say, well, okay, well guess what? You're in management now because we got a bunch of new kids coming in and somebody's got to play dad or mom to them. 
and then you become stale, right? You, you're no longer coding in a language. So, but so I would, <laughs> but I still, since I was a manager and head of track money and time, so I became an expert in spreadsheets because that's you manipulate those. So I can I can do almost anything with a spreadsheet. I can like these coding exercises they do for interviews. I can. It's very challenging, but you can do them in spreadsheets. A lot, a lot of them, and uh, like the frog jumping on the switches and that kind of thing. I coded that. So, 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 more and more, I became entrenched in spreadsheets, and then I retired. I tried to go back to software development, so I had to relearn stuff I used to know, and then learn a bunch of new environments. And so, then this hackathon came up, and I said, "Hey, this is like, it's it's it resonates. It's tuned for." Uh, you know, spreadsheet people. I said, great, I'm a spreadsheet person. I'm sign me up. Yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what I tell a lot of people when they when they want to get into coding. So I love that story because that resonates with me as well. And I think that when people are looking to get into coding, everyone asks like, how should I, what's the best way? And I, I tell them, you know, not that I've, I'm some master of like uh, actual like um, spoken languages, but everyone says, if you want to learn a language, move to that country and, that's how you're going to have to do it. You're, it's like, you know, sink or swim. So I, I tell people the same thing with programming languages. If you really want to learn a language, don't get me wrong, you know, take whatever classes you can read books, but find a, have a, if you have a problem that you're trying to solve, and if there's a way that you can use whatever language you're studying to solve that problem, I think that goes so much further than like a course or you know, a YouTube video. Um, again, all of those, uh, they're, they're all needed and they're all wonderful resources, but for me that they like the uh like the feeling you get when you make something that works that that i don't know it's just it it's just it's so different from looking at a book and it's sort of like copying and pasting well i guess they're like <laughs> online books now you can copy and paste but for me it was like read it type it you know sort of thing yeah. and, and like the, you know a lot of things were stale they weren't really fun but if you can think of a, an actual problem that you have and you're like oh i would love to solve this and you can somehow incorporate whatever language you're learning i think that goes like so much further. So I love the idea of, hey, I'm a spreadsheet guy and I can now turn a spreadsheet into a, like an app. That's, I think that's definitely something that could get people excited. Or if you have an app and you're maybe not, you know, a coder yet or something or an idea for something to be able to turn a spreadsheet yeah, I'm into surprised. something interactive is really cool. Yeah, I'm surprised uh, Google hasn't done this because they did a great job of, you know, stealing Excel ideas and and building google sheets and now it works really well uh, it can do almost everything and then some that google excel can other than excel can you know deal with a much larger spreadsheet than, than google sheets can but um but to not be able to co easily come up with a mobile solution for uh dealing with the google sheet application i'm surprised they didn't bother doing that but i guess you, uh, you probably have to hobble it to a certain extent, it's uh, but it looks like you know this thing actually does what you want it to do. It, uh, I'm 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 impressed, especially considering it's not it hasn't been around that long, and uh, so I think hopefully this, you know, hopefully they're not going to abandon it. Hopefully, hopefully they'll keep plenty of code around, and uh, uh, you know, make it better and more usable and and come up with uh, some ideas for that kind of thing. So we'll see. Well, I mean, the, the good news is, is that if it's, you know, Amazon doing this, at least they have, even if it's not popular, it could probably stay alive longer than maybe some, you know, random, you know, Kickstarter thing that could eventually fizzle out. But I think with just the user base, uh, yeah, it's interesting. I, 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 I agree, I, agree. I, I hope it uh, takes more traction. Uh, and, and hangs around for a while for it to really uh, catch on. But uh, until you brought it up, I had not heard of it. So hopefully they'll maybe put some money into marketing and, and some things like that advertisement, but it, it seems really cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm cool. glad I, I, I'm seeing it, Dennis. I heard about it because somebody is, AJ Davis is account manager for that. I have no idea what he's working on, right? I have to go, what? Um, but this is the first time I see it. It's it's really really cool, and um, I'm just thinking, what should I put on there? Well, I might still try that six <laughs> one thousand six hundred eighty six rows of <laughs> that yeah. 
what should I talk about? But of course I need to. Well, the one you sent me is, is, uh, is a pretty complex spreadsheet in terms of fields, and, uh, uh, sections. I'm a uh, evangelist, the advocate of uh, what I refer to as flat spreadsheets. And uh, which is basically the, the spreadsheet is, you know, it can have complex formulas in it, that's okay. But in terms of the structure of the sheet itself, it's all rows and columns. And the reason you want to do that mm -hmm. is because uh, then you can take advantage of uh, the tools that spreadsheets naturally have nowadays, which is filtering, mm -hmm. pivot tables, data tables, array formulas, that kind of thing. When you have a structure that's sectioned off with, you know, it's like three different dimensions in one two-dimensional sheet. It, you can't take advantage of, of all the things that I just described. So, so if you do have a two-dimensional sheet and there's not a lot of structure inside of it, then you can migrate it, you know, port, uh, port it to a CSV and then get it into this thing. Because if it's not easily translatable to a CSV, you're, you're going to be in trouble. Yeah, um, that's right. That one is, yeah, it's a more complicated spreadsheet. Um, yeah. yeah, just keep it flat. Keep it flat, keep it simple. Mm. But, but again, I'm more than happy, anybody in the audience, anybody out there, if they want to contact me with a, a spreadsheet that they want to migrate to Honeycode, I'll help them. Yeah, please make sure you guys take take them up on that offer. And again, um, so Dennis, are we winding down? Can we open up the floor for any other additional questions or anything like that? Or do you, was there anything else? Yeah, that's about it. I mean, I can show you about scraping uh, that um, you know one website a little bit more in detail. But but uh, but yeah, I, I, I'm essentially uh, finished on my presentation. Awesome. So yeah, so with that said, again, everyone feel free to unmute your mics or ask type other questions. We can field them for you. Um, this is usually the time when we'd wrap up a meeting and, you know, if we were meeting in real life, uh, you know, presentations over, we just sort of hang out and chat, whether it be follow up stuff to the actual presentation or just, you know, feel like, you know, chatting. I know it's Saturday, I'm sure there's, you know, people have a place to be, a place to go and stuff like that. But uh, I, I do want to thank everyone uh, for joining uh, us today. Um, and I do want to thank Dennis for putting all this stuff together. It's, uh, you know, it takes quite a bit of time to usually put together, you know, a presentation, uh, not only just either in the research to even just get the information or then have the knowledge to, to do it, but the, the logistics of actually literally putting together a presentation, usually a lot of work goes into those. So, uh, so I, I appreciate the effort that you put into this. Um, so I want to thank you for that. Uh, but yeah, if anyone has any questions, again, feel free to unmute your mics. Uh, we can hang out a little bit. Um, I'll probably stop the recording now. And then at some point in time, uh, if it gets approved, I'll get it up on uh, YouTube for everyone to see where, unless Dennis has better, better plans for it. But it was recorded. So there's at least a, a version for us to reference back to. Um, so, but yeah, with that said, feel free to, to unmute your mics.